Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Garrison. It's my pleasure to introduce you today to our third session on regenerative health as we convene Humanity Rising. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Stella made a comment about healing uh, in experiencing nature that is an obvious point when you think about it, but it is uh, something that I've been pondering uh, over the last 24 hours, and I want to shed some additional light on uh, because I think it may be at the root, actually, at the very root of the current malaise that is gripping the United States, Europe, uh, and the rest of the world as more and more people move into cities, many of which, like Sao Paulo, Brazil, or Tokyo, are now as large as small countries. Think of a city of 25, 30, 40 million people, where most people in those cities never go outside because there is no outside. I did some research and a fully 50% of the US public doesn't go outside. And similar statistics can be uh, discerned in other countries around uh, the world, particularly, as I said, in major cosmopolitan megalopolises as they're beginning to be called. Uh, the statistics on children now uh, in all the major countries that they're spending three times more on their computers than playing outside. Uh, and when you think of the fact that they're not researching it on their computers, they're on social media and the isolation and the alienation and the disconnection that happens through social media, you get a measure of the challenge that we have of just interacting with nature, uh, where research shows that if you spend consistent time in nature, uh, you feel better. Uh, you're uh, often cured of depressions or anxieties. Uh, you uh, have uh, better health. Uh, you age more gracefully. Uh, and that you generally feel more empathy and compassion, uh, which is what our world so desperately needs. Uh, but today I want to take it to a deeper level as we begin uh, with a reflection on some of the uh, research, the groundbreaking research that Carl Jung, the great Swiss psychologist, uh, uh, made in the 1930s about uh, what was happening there in Germany, because I think there are striking parallels to what's happening uh, here uh, in the United States at our time. In the late 1920s and early 1930s, uh, before Adolf Hitler had come into power in, in uh, 1932, uh, Jung in Switzerland started to have dreams. Uh, and uh, uh, to hear the dreams of his uh, patients. And he realized something that um, his French patients and his Italian patients were having uh, normal dream, shall we say, but his German patients were reporting dreams of extraordinary violence and cruelty and madness. And he started to reflect. And then he began to observe what was going on politically in Germany. Uh, and in the early 1930s, <clears throat> he wrote a couple of articles where he said, we need to understand that what's happening in Germany uh, is, is not just politics as usual, but this is an archetypal formation that is actually seizing the collective psyche of a nation. And a werewolf, he said, in sheep's clothing is taking over. So Jung was one of the first people to discern that what was going on with the rise of the Nazis was not an ordinary phenomenon, 
uh, but was affecting the collective psyche of an entire nation. And then in 1938, he was invited to Yale University, actually, where he gave uh, the Terry Lectures, which are an annual lecture that they have at Yale for a very long time. And he gave the Terry Lectures during that year. And he talked about the archetypal formation of Wotan, an ancient Teutonic god uh, from Scandinavia and Germany, Wotan, the god of fury, the god of storm, the god of a marauding uh, evil spirit that would seize uh, uh, people in the night uh, and destroy them, uh, the god of madness and delusion. Uh, and he reflected then during the war, as he also began to re realize that the dreams of his German patients were getting more and more uh, violent and destructive, he began to reflect on what's causing this. Why, why would this happen? It's a powerful question because it's deeper than politics. And you, you can see this because it's affecting dreams of individual people. Long story, but the essence of what Jung concluded about the reason why Germany was being infected by this uh, dark archetypal formation that became then embodied in Adolf Hitler was that the German people, which at that time were the most highly industrialized nation in the world with large urban populations and a highly technocratic uh, uh, industrial uh, infrastructure had basically cut themselves off from nature. He says that's the root cause of what's going on over there. That's an extraordinary point and insight to make. He says, when you cut yourself off from nature, whether as an individual or as a collective, and you become characterized by what he calls uh, anxious urban masses, you become susceptible to any madman who gives you a narrative and an enemy and a reason to focalize the anxiety that accumulates in you because you've cut yourself off from nature into an enemy formation. Hannah Arendt, uh, others have commented uh, on this as well, but I just wanted to bring in today as we uh, continue our reflections on regenerative health, the relationship not only between our dreams, but our relationship with nature and being outdoors and being amongst the trees and the flowers and in the mountains and walking along the rivers or going to the beach is not an idle uh, activity, but is actually essential for the maintenance and the nurturance of our deepest character as humans, and that is around the nurturance of our natural empathy uh, and compassion. I say this because I believe that that's the same madness that sees the Germans in a very different form is seizing the United States. How else do you explain the massive shootings that we allow every day against each other with military-style weapons? We're the only country in the history of the world that allows citizens to have military weapons in their arsenal. And in state after state, they can now do it without even a permit. So when we look at the issues of regenerative health, when we look at some of these 
seemingly subtle issues that we're going to explore today and tomorrow around a Taoist view and around intention. It might seem that these are marginal issues that that um, are are not as fundamental to our medical well-being as high-tech science. But in fact, the instrumentality of high-tech science is a result of the deconnection with nature that is at the source of our problem. So anything that we can do to bring ourselves back to ourselves, back to a rootedness uh, with the natural order, and thereby back into a sense of community connected with nature uh, is a matter of urgent concern for us, not only individually, but collectively. Because Jung was right, at the root of the rise of fascism, at the root of the rise of totalitarianism, is a people disconnected from the most essential identity we all have, and that is that we are nature. And therefore, nature as our mother needs to constantly contain and nurture us as we live out our lives uh, as expressions of nature. So anyway, I just thought that that might be useful to contemplate uh, as we uh, deepen our uh, awareness of regenerative health and the master's and PhD program that Stephanie and Stella and Spring are, are bringing uh, to our attention. And we're going to be launching over the next several months uh, with uh, Ubiquity University and the Tara approach and the various organizations that are represented. So thank you, everyone. Welcome to Humanity Rising. And I'd like to now uh, welcome back uh, Stephanie Mines, uh, neuroscientist, neurobiologist par excellence, uh, who will uh, initiate our discussion for today. Thank you, Stephanie, for all that you do, and welcome. Thank you, Jim, for your astute, chilling comments that I suggest should be broadcast way beyond this circle to the entire world, to the entire medical profession, certainly. And you have articulated why Ubiquity University is the place for this revolutionary paradigm shift in healthcare and in medicine, and why this innovative new story that brings healthcare from the ground up to the hands, the minds, the hearts, and the bodies of the people who need it the most. Ubiquity University is the home for such a place. And you have woven the story in a way that validates me and chills me at the same time. Thank you, Jim. You've explained the urgency and the intensity with which I address this topic that motivated the development of regenerative health for a climate changing world. As I said in my poem yesterday, I have this passion for perseverance and resilience. And that comes directly out of my prenatal experience, my epigenetic lineage, and my love, really. My love for humanity, my love for the world. So regenerative health for a climate changing world is an MA and PhD program about to launch on Ubiquity University, but it is also a container of remarkable resources for anyone committed to their own well being, optimizing it, and for the well being of others, their family members, and their communities. The overarching intention of the program, whether you engage in it for the credentialing or not, is to manifest a cadre all over the world of regenerative health practitioners who with the skills and the awareness 
that you will embody through this program Go out into the community, whatever that community is, formal or informal, casual, the people you meet in the midst of the multiplicity of crises that are ravaging our planet right now, that you come into that situation aligned, grounded, able to take care of yourself and with true resources that are accessible to people in need and thereby avert the very catastrophes that have destroyed millions and millions of people historically. So this is a revolution in healthcare, a revolution in medicine, and you can be front and center by participating in this program. I want to bring the faculty on board here, Stella Osorojos Eisenstein and Spring Chang. And today we are going to feature Dr. Spring Chang, who heads the holistic mental health and expressive arts component of this curriculum. I feel really in bringing uh, Spring and Stella onto the faculty. I'm applauding myself every day for doing that. I am sharing with the world, with all of you, gems, absolute gems of revolutionary, but at the same time, simple and accessible inroads, portals into your birthright of regenerative, resilient health in the holistic sense for yourself and for all those who you contact. So Dr. Spring Chung is a molecular biologist, an acupuncturist, a musician, a singer, a dancer, a composer. She is my dear friend, she is a master of the I Ching. She is an indigenous Taoist. The opportunity to study with her is something you don't want to miss. From my personal standpoint, her precious presence in my life, Spring, your precious presence in my life eases my nervous system and allows me to feel great hope. So with that, I would like you to open with the somatic exercise and share with us your brilliance. Thank you. Jim, um, uh, uh, it, it, this is the third morning we come on here, and uh, it feels like uh, um, we're getting into a groove here with <laughs> you all. <laughs> and um, I, um, Jim's introduction is a great segue into this somatic attunement I would like to share with all of us to open. Um, because in the long history of China, China has gone through many, many rounds of destruction, creation, recreation, destruction. And all through that history, um, something sustained the civilization and its vitality is this medicine knowledge that think ourselves as nature, not away from nature. So if you open the Chinese med medical book, we talk about um, not in terms of like a skeletal muscle new nervous system, which are, are great components, but a Chinese literature, medical literature talk about the, the very um, elemental forces that forms our physiology as the same language as nature, um, water, fire, earth, and wood. So there's this notion. So I think there are two ways we can be intimate with nature. One is we go out and like, um, children being embraced in the womb of Mother Nature. And in the somatic entombment I want to share with you, we can also turn it around. We can 
turn it around that embrace nature in our body and uh, attune to the elemental forces in our body, the very force that forms the, the greens, the river, the mountain outside that also form this rivers of splendor inside of ourselves. So with that, um, I'm going to stand and I'm going to invite you to stand if you will, but you can certainly do this sitting too. So I'm just going to invite you to stand comfortably, find a place, find a way to stand comfortably um, with your feet about shoulder width apart. And take a deep breath. And every time you breathe out, imagine that you are sinking deeper into the ground. Imagining that you are like, um, your body weight is settling like a, a bag of sand. If you shimmer it, it all kind of settle nicely into its own place. Keep breathing. And meanwhile, um, we become aware of this vertical alignment that set us apart between uh, the earth underneath us and the wide open sky above us. And this is a privilege, this vertical alignment as a human species, and we shared with other primates to some extent, but this is an incredible privilege that granted to us by the billions of years of evolution on earth, that we get to stand in between earth and the sky. And in fact, in Chinese, character, Wu, the character means shaman or priest or priestess, is precise that, a human being standing in between earth and sky as a conductor, as a medium, as a channel. So as you um, plant your feet deep in the earth, like I said in the previous session that um, in the ancient Taoism, we think our body as a microcosmos. We're not just five or six or you know whatever feet tall. We are as tall as the cosmos. So I'd like to imagine that your feet are actually touching the center of the earth. There are this immense boulder, immense rock formation underneath you that keep a record of the entire life of the earth. And you can imagine that layer of rock, um, you can feel it, um, dial it, maybe it extends to your ankle or maybe to your calf, to your knee, however that thick la that layer of rock is underneath you. That is our foundation. And once you attune to that layer, um, I'd like to invite you to move your attention a little further up. And please feel free to shimmer your weight or if some tremor comes through your body, you don't have to stand the way I do. Um, listen to your body, uh, follow it, allow it to happen, allow your body to unwind. So next layer, I would like to invite you to imagine that at this, um, around your thigh and the knee, um, this is a thick layer of fertile soil. The soil that on which all the plants material of our life um, take nutrients from, sink their roots in. And feel that you can even um, shimmer it around, turn your side, feel as if your side is in touch with this generative, this nutritious, soil material around you and keep your breathing and your breath is what's going to um, unite, integrate all these different layers of elements. And 
Next, I'm going to um, invite you, if you wish, gently put your hands palm over palm over your lower belly and just feel that now our awareness has surfaced from the rock, the soil, and now to this layer of liquid. So almost you're imagining yourself is standing in a body of water. It could be lake, it could be ocean. And um, you can allow your uh, pelvis area to gently swoosh and swish around to feel the water in this layer. So this is the primordial ocean. This is where the first single cell of life is being um, burst in this water um, element. And also at the very beginning of our birth as a fertilized egg, we're also immersed in the fluid, just kind of like the first cell in, on Earth immersed in the primordial ocean. And now uh, let's put our hand around our um, heart area. So from um, solar plex on upwards, this, the shoulder and the chest area, you can gently uh, follow um, with your hand, follow, tracing your heart and lung organ. This is where, and imagine that the steam from the lake or ocean is, or um, the water vapor is filling up this chamber, the air. So now the light, the uh, elemental forces has rarefied from the very thick, dense layer to liquid and all the way to a very airy, very uh, flowy and uh, um, uh, free um, layer of life. That's how we can, every second we're taking in and out breath. And with that breath, we are connected with all the beings of the earth. Let's feel into the air element. And lastly, um, I'm just gonna invite you to intuitively place your hand anywhere above your head. Just feel into the, your energy layer and find a place, find a place of your hand where you can rest comfortably. And imagine that from your neck on, this is the space of pure energy and the light. And you are like a star emanating the starlight of your consciousness all the way from this, whatever location you are on Earth, all the way to the entire universe. Now, I'm going to just gently ask you to relax and just hold all these different layers of yourself in your awareness, in your breathing. Find however, however way that makes you relax. And we're going to just gently do a flow with our um, body movement to integrate all these layers and to feel into that current, which is our awareness, that we can integrate and, and generate all these relationship and interactivities between all these layers. So let's, uh, um, you can follow me if you wish. You can also, you're also welcome to do this intuitively with your sense of what's right for the flow. So in this flow, I start with connecting with the center of the earth and find 
And then from there, I find a upward gross movement that gently raise my arms, raise my spine, raise my energy all the way to as far as I can reach to the edge of the universe. And from there, I hear an echo, a response back from the other end of the time. And that is gently showering down into my body, into my system, as well as the surroundings, the environment around me, like a rain, moisturing everything, and then going back all the way to the center of the earth. You can take a deep breath and seal this energy with your know, palm with palm and find it either in front of your heart or anywhere in the midline that it feels right to you. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes and open your awareness to this space we have cultivated. And we'll come back. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Stella and Stephanie, for sharing this with me. And yeah, and the, all those uh, out there, all of you who I hope you uh, followed us to some extent, I would love to hear some feedback, comments of what's this like for you. Um, Lisa, uh, if you have um, comments about your experience, I would love to see that in the chat. I had a question about it. Mm -hmm. The um, was there an elemental? Um, was there an el elemental attention to add to that? So, like earth, wood, I mean, with each layer. I, I mean, I I couldn't quite match it. Right. Uh, I mean, obviously, like lung might be metal, you know, and heart might be fire. But I didn't know about the other layers. If there was some way to ascribe them. To elemental to elements yeah well um i i you know for this for the element i so we're in the generative house we're talking about not the modality specific house paradigm because in different like in uh, western alchemy there's different elements than chinese alchemy so um i'm not in this particular exercise i'm not using a particular modality specific element Although uh, I would say, you know, when I think about the uh, starting with the rock, in, in fact, in Chinese medicine, the metal element actually, the I think the more uh, refined translation should be crystallization, which the crystals inside the um, that's what the the word uh, metal really means in Chinese. So, <laughs> so in that way, um, so I'm going it just by the na nature how the nature is formatted um not not particularly to the medical uh, knowledge okay thank you That's yeah thank you for all of you who are putting um sharing your um reflection um so today i'm going to um uh share i'm going to introduce you and share with you the materials that I'm going to bring to uh, really this is a delight to um, augment and collaborate with what Stella and Stephanie are presenting here and I feel like we are three musicians the jazz musicians <laughs> jamming with each other <laughs> and yeah so today today's um, 
uh, I'm going to do my solo part and have uh, the two of you to beat your drum beat <laughs> and play it, plug your bass. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, you know, uh, Stephanie introduced me at the beginning. Um, she talked about all these different phases of my life and the different areas I have um, uh, put myself into um, scientist arts and uh, um, traditional medicine. And, and, and I also see myself as a kind of a philosopher, embodied a philosopher, because that's what really Tao, Taoism is. It's an embodied philosophy. Um, but I, I thought, oh, you know, there are a lot of you I haven't met yet. Um, so how, what would be a way for me to introduce you that's more relatable? And I thought about the, I realized when I asked myself that question, I realized there's a central question that has threaded the whole journey of my life. I have a very multifaceted journey. Is like from the very beginning. Uh, so I was born in China before all this industrialization, this, you know, highly technocratic way of living uh, started. So I witnessed the transition from the, the last stage of uh, um, you, you call primitive and, and or um, traditional way or indigenous way of living, boom, all the way to this like high tech high rise and everything. So um, along this way, I always keep a question or the question has been addressed, has been explored through my journey is, how can I compost the trauma of colonization and the patriarchy and the capitalism? You know, the, it, it's like the thick layers of these um, toxicity, toxicities that's layered onto our psyche. How can I compost them into uh, fountains of creativity that can feel my life's work, my, feel my inspiration? So, with that, I you know I thought about in, in I think in Japan when there's this nuclear um, uh, power plant leakage, they contaminated contaminated the tons of uh, soil um, you know soil and the fields. So eventually, people figure out to bring this mushroom that eats up these these toxicities and it turns that into life materials. So in a way, and that's how Earth work. Earth is incredibly resilient that um, whatever our human civilization, this run of human civilization laid on her, she will find a way to pass through it and find life again. And that's what, what's been driving me all throughout. So um, so when, so as I was thinking about that, I realized the one thing that has sustained my connection with that uh, primordial life force that allows me to do all this composting and the healing of my trauma. Um, there are three things. One is um, my kind of intuitive access to the, um, the all the po poems and the classic literatures left by the ancient sages, um, Taoists. Um, and second is my innate desire to move and uh, um, the dancer inside of me. So I, you know, I I, I wasn't at all. Um, being exposed to any artistic training until I was 41. So I never knew I have I was an artist inside, but I have this raw, raw form of uh, like my own expression that's always kept alive. And that's what kept me rooted in my own uh, life, regenerative life source. And the third thing is um, before the industrialization started in China, um, I didn't grow up with my parents, which left its own traumatic impact on my psyche. But I grew up in my grandparents' household, where people pretty much are still kept in that um, uh, that people had presence. So I I didn't grow up with parents who expected you know in, industrialized culture. There's I think there's unconscious or implicit. Um, expectations for performance and uh, uh, productivity, especially at the early onset of elect, um, industrialization, that lure of performing to get ahead to success is so strong. I see many people, um, children of today, like um, Chinese youth, um, I see that a lot. It's very heartbreaking that their parents get lured into that 
productivity and that just um so sabotage the foundation of life whereas i didn't i luckily <laughs> i escaped that growing up in my grandparents house that i was uh i experienced and tasted was like to be part of a culture that's based on presence and belonging and that actually is the gift that i wanted to share through this mental health program is artistic the raw organic form of artistic expression the um the taoist wisdom and that i have distilled and the culture of belonging so um so i want to talk a little bit about uh why mental health you know in this regenerative health paradigm um i think in our in modernized world we we tend to separate you know we uh when there's physical healing we go to hospital um to see your specialist um uh you know this and that a cardiovascular or pulmonary or skin dermatologist gynecologist these specialist and then you go see therapy for your uh, mental health issue but in indigenous heat medicine um well and also where <laughs> you, you know in in and also in the in uh, on Sundays you go to church so there's these three different <laughs> institutions hospital and uh, therapy therapy and the church and they're like spread out in different locations and they're also far apart in our mind but in the original um in the indigenous model uh indigenous way of living all these three things are actually interwoven together that in, 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 impossible to separate so when we are, you know, like when Stella and Stephanie are treating someone's uh, pain, you know, back pain or, or um, neurological conditions, they're they are actually accessing some deep psychological, or could, they could be accessing some deep psychological trauma in the early childhood. Um, they may not be necessarily the things they say, but that's all, um, or, or it could be accessing some karmic, um, uh, karmic knot that has been tied in in the soul. So all, all these aspects are very much in, interwoven together. So, um, so, so when when I you know um, my my co my um, so I have a institute, the Residence Pass Institute. My the co-founder is uh, my partner, Joe Shirley. So when I was discussing with with her with him, he said, um, "So this word mental health is sometimes, in, you know, when when we say mental health, people in in our culture, in this culture right now, immediately the things that most um, foreground in mental health realm is talk therapy, psych med, and the DSM diagnosis. Um, so these are the." primary way we think about mental health that's based on a reductionist model it's the same mindset that drives this industrialization highly extractive way from nature um that results into isolation and and uh, just tremendous uh disconnection not that i don't i'm not trying to say i'm not saying that they these are um they don't they have a place for sure but the proportion is way out of balance. Um, so I, um, I myself, this, you know, I, despite have lots of trauma and 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 the uh, um, uh, abandonment issue and the bills, all, all of that, I've never actually been to a talk therapy. <laughs> I've never seek <laughs> conventional um, uh, uh, psychological um, uh, therapy. Um, so because my uh, rooted in the Taoist way of uh, integrating the body, mind, and the spirit. Um, so so next, I, I think I'm going to, I want to, um, uh, in today's time, I would like, I hopefully, I will see if I have time, would like to share some experiential of how um, the to think about holistic mental health that is integrative of somatic attunement, integrative of artistic expression, um, and and a very important aspect of the mental health in the holistic sense 
is actually in the company of a community. Um, the, in, I think another big um, issue with our current mental health is so much centered on one-on-one -on -one, uh, solo work, which is, again, very important. I, I, there's a big part of uh, resonance code is one-on-one -on -one work. However, again, the proportion needs to be dialed. Uh, we need to add in the community, the, the community healing, the cultural aspect into the mental health. Because we, in the you know the, um, like uh, what James shared at the beginning, when Hitler, the the Hitler's expression of that madness, is his, and it's also more than his. He he's an expression of uh, of a collective symptom that is being per percolating and and the resin so this resin percolating and and spreading um and and actually in resonating in in all the people who share that collective um ESO um uh, consciousness so um I just want to give a little bit um introduction of what how do the how do we approach the mental health from the Taoist perspective so I want to uh evoke that image of that Tai Chi symbol uh, you, you probably also have seen that a lot in, in our culture there's the, the 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 big swoosh of whiteness and the big swoosh of blackness the yang and the yin um and within the yin within within the black there's the white dot and within the white and there's black dot so um so basically in so the yin yang depicts every, everything is a relationship in everything we um can identify cognize is a relationship of these two kinds of energy two kinds of uh, consciousness um so in a way um in our car so um if we cast that in our relationship to the uh, our conscious and unconscious mind, then um, you can see that from the Taoist perspective, it's not about uh, dominating and control using methods of dom dominating and control for the rational thoughts to conquer or control the irrational. Uh, you know, because in our I think our modern world, there's such a emphasis on rational thinking. Um, then and marginalization of the irrational aspect of ourselves, the the feelings, the intuition, the somatic senses, and the, the the dream consciousness. These are all territory that cannot be fully explained by our current knowledge of science, science or rational thoughts. So they they've been marginalized. So um, the 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 holistic mental health is really about is reestablishing the harmony between these two. Uh, the conscious and unconscious mind, and then the rational and the irrational, through a uh, somatic way, through artistic expression, through the uh, community of relating. Um, so I I want to um, so you may ask, what's like to have a harmony between conscious and unconscious mind? What what what's that state is like? So I want to introduce something you probably all have heard of, which is Wu Wei. It's a Chinese term, uh, literally translate into uh, non-action, which is actually when when you just look at the uh, surface, the terminal, the um, uh, superficial translation is actually not in, not correct. Wu Wei actually means effortless action, meaning someone who can be on the surface look like um, just going with the flow and uh, spontaneously act, and yet they get a lot done. <laughs> They're extremely productive and, and, and probably even competitive. So that so that the harmony between the conscious and the conscious, unconscious mind is a state of flow, spontaneity. And more importantly, it's actually their sense of connecting with something larger than you. So as if something else larger than you is using your body and the mind and uh, whatever talent you have honed to express something, to to achieve something. So with that, maybe I, I want to take a pause and just have all of you, and including um, Stephanie and Stella, to reflect in your life, 
what circumstance, what activity, or in the company of maybe your children or, or pet, uh, in, just come to your mind, reflect upon in what state, in what circumstance that you seem to experience that way state, that spontaneously acting, but acting in a, in a way that is productive. And, you know, you look back like, oh, I did, I don't know how I draw that picture, or I don't know how I built that incredible sandcastle with my uh, uh, children, so, something like that. So, so, yeah. So, I love the analogy uh, with the mushroom that devours the toxins. Uh, and that to me accords with what you're inquiring into, because I frequently will say, even uh, very recently reading the manuscript of my book that's about to come out, um, looking at a poem like the one I read yesterday, and I often feel like, how did I write that? When did I write that? Did I write that? Mm -hmm. um, and what you're suggesting is fascinating to me because I also felt that way about delivering my children mm -hmm. as well as mothering my children. Um, so, you know, I had my children at home uh, and I had a midwife present. And actually, I was fortunate for my first child, there was also a physician present in case there should be anything alarming that happened because I was in labor for well over 48 hours. But what both the midwife and the physician determined was that I was fine and the baby was fine. And so they didn't interfere with the labor, even though it was taking longer uh, than what they were used to experiencing in hospital. And that process was so arduous and so demanding. There was frequently the feeling of, I can't do this. But then there was this overwhelming surrender to the process. And then this miracle happened mm -hmm. <laughs> as a, a being emerged from my body. Uh, and there was this question, how did I do that? How did I open <laughs> that wide? Right. Of right. course, I know now it wasn't just me. It was me in harmony with my baby, but that experience and then the mothering that came so naturally after that, all of that, along with the writing of the poetry, it feels like the same Wu Wei. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, uh, Stephanie. I, I, you know, I think the, the pockets of this kind of experience is, for, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone has experienced it. And also the question is, how do we take those pockets of experience as seed so that they can grow into this, you know, part of our life that has been polluted by the to toxicity of the, in the industrialized world? So, um, uh, 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 so one one big aspect of the holistic um, mind health, mental health is is actually anchor in this experience of way and widen our awareness to become of those ex, um, scenarios, situations where we are so stuck um, into striving or efforting or self-denigrating or de depressed through the portal of feeling. Um, I think a big part of the uh, entryway into the uh, the, the now I don't call, I don't like to call it irrational. I like, like to call it transrational. <laughs> we, there's actually tremendous rational wisdom of the universe that's inherited in our healing and embodied intuition that current science doesn't know how to hasn't developed enough structure and knowledge to describe it. So I call it the trans transrational wisdom <laughs> in our irrationality. So. Um, I want to say that a big part of what's blocking us through to the the uh, this transrational aspect of ourselves is the our lack of ability or lack of training or lack of muscle to feel the uncomfortable feelings. So um, 
the uh, um, Stella, you want to say something? Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm I love listening to you, Spring, because because I always learn something, and um, I love thinking about this as Wu Wei. Um, I have had experiences with Wu Wei. One really profound experience I had a samadhi experience from meditating intensely for a while and um and stepped into this maybe two week space where everything I was doing was sort of happening to me mm -hmm. I'd be driving my car and suddenly the car would stop and I would notice that wow good thing the car stopped because I was about to hit that car unbeknownst to me but something new and just took over it was really miraculous um, but I'm thinking now of it in the context of the healing work that we're doing collectively and, um, which is so similar, I think, and, uh, with thinking about, you know, holding attention or presence through deep emotion on a spot of trauma in the body and how that creates coherence that allows us to really just slip into a way. I've never thought about it that way before. So it's really quite a beautiful way of kind of just pointing to the, like, like how the resolution, how the resolution of trauma creates coherence and that way is our natural state is our original brilliance. Mm -hmm. as Stephanie would call it. So, yeah, just, uh, I just thank you for that. Um, a little mind nugget. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So um you know the our the and life energy it I think of like you know the like water that there's water can have taken the shape of steam vapor that's formless and it can be liquid forming and then it can be ice very solid. And same thing the our these patterns that result into physical psychological, uh, you know, our life situation issue, you know, uh, sometimes we got caught into the same pattern again, and again, <laughs> that's, that's, that's our, you know, some, something like our karma needs to work out. They're all similar kind of, they are all sourced from the same energetic pattern. They're just expressed at, you know, different densities. So um, with the holistic mental health, uh, a great entryway is to pay, how do we pay attention to feelings, to emotion. Um, I think in our culture, um, a, a habit is that we want to shape our feeling, our experience of emotion. You know, when we feel sad, we want to shape it into joy. Uh, when we feel down and depressed, we want to bring us out and just to cheer up. And, or if we are angry, we want to like pat it down into calmness. And and these are all form of control and domination that as a legacy of our um you know colonization and patriarch or or rational center rational centric based worldview and and it's really what um the the resonant resonant um so my work is called the resonance code and Stella's work is called the resonance attention so in in the the line of work we we do at the resonance code um we do this one on also do we also do one-on-one -on -one work but we very much like what Stephanie and um, Stella was hold, you know, holding a, a side, sacred body side, sacred side on a body. We hold that kind of quality of attention, of allowing and the presence and a safe container with emotions and feelings. I can't tell you how many times, especially, um, i give you some example. I, I, in the last three years, I've been primarily working with Chinese women in China. Uh, over Zoom because <laughs> uh, I can't go to China because of COVID. <laughs> and um, in Chinese culture, uh, especially for women, almost like unanimously, people, uh, women never are able to express anger. It, it's just a, a, a deep taboo in, in our culture. And so many times we we did we do that we sit together over Zoom over this one on one um, settings. That we, you know, at the beginning we we inquiry and they will say, I never feel anger. I there's you know in a situation they may be abused or 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 violated by whatever in whatever way. Then there's 
there's um, this almost like a reactive automatic going to forgiveness and oneness and love and without actually genuinely feel the hurt and anger. So when we finally get to that point, when we created the space and the condition for that genuine human response of anger to show up and allow them to express the, however the way they express. It. And this is really sacred that, you know, to hear this really boutique, you know, um, women who feel so, um, um, you know, just gentle and uh, generous and loving and that she was like this deep anger inside of herself said, I want to just blow the world up in that kind of anger. And knowing that even that, you know, the, the, the energy of our creativity, um, when we stuff it, that's when it becomes destructive. So, so in a way, I feel like in, in our culture, you know, we see a lot in, in this culture, in American, we see so much destruction happen. People, you know, what like what has been said before, carrying weapons, shooting. At the same time, we lack, we desperately need a way, a, a safe, a health, stable and health way to allow these feelings to be felt, to course through our body so that they can find their creative outlet instead of being, you know, um, just like uncontrollably let out into destruction. So that's that's really at the core of the mental health component is how do we first experience that container with ourselves, with one another, and also in the context of a circle, a group, um, to witness each other. So, um, so in our, you know, we have various um, ways. And and uh, um, well, actually, before I go into, before I jump into, you know, deeper uh, intro introduction of the program, I just want to take a breath here because I've shared a lot and shared a lot of intense things. So, um, yeah, to see if anyone wants to. Chinese. I, I really appreciate this opportunity uh, for everyone to witness the, the collaborative flow of the faculty and to get to know us in this way because we are the program, really. So when you step into the program from whatever portal you choose, what you get in part is the wisdom of three women who have directly addressed the different and significant traumas in our lives and discovered these effective composting uh, strategies, and I am really taking that in what you said, Spring. And that's that's an, a lovely aha for me is to see, for instance, my poetry is not only the expression of that particular emotional flow or that guidance or that awareness, it's also simultaneously composting the trauma that generated. That was the friction that generated that expression. And seeing my motherhood in that same context is revelatory. It's lovely. It's, it's really validating for me, uh, strengthening to see that my expression uh, as a mother to my children and to my grandchildren, the, those impulses and those manifestations are composting alchemizing uh, and just going back to the exercise you opened with, I can feel that that composting is going back generations and going out into the universe. Uh, and I think it's absolutely wonderful, delightful and reasonable for us to experience how such trauma informed creative resolution is the way to the new story. It's the inner and the outer occurring simultaneously. 
So thank you very much for the, the paradigm that you're presenting. Yeah, I'm really feeling the truth of it too. Um, every artist, of course, knows that um, they don't write for any write or dance or sing or for any other reason than to live, to be able to uh, stand themselves, right? <laughs> like, I know that I, you know, I'm actually getting ready to send my son off to this arts camp that I went to as a child that that literally saved my life, that that gave me this creative outlet that that I would not have gotten through those years without. And um, we've in this culture really siloed the arts into like some weird um, uh, ghetto where you know, it's either to make money or for kind of street cred, but it's not seen as an expression of vital and healthy culture. This is not true in all cultures. I uh, had a little delve recently into the Bwiti culture that uses iboga um, as a medicine, and then they dance, and then they dance. And this is part of the medicine. <laughs> Right. And I came out of that experience with one directive, dance more. You know, like that, it's not uh, a like artistic endeavor for its own sake. It is a vital necessity for my body. Yeah. So I, 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 uh, I'm moved by the, by the reclamation of art. Uh, into a fuller expression of what it means to be human. Thank you uh, both. Yeah, the um, I was maybe I'll, I'll share a little story about how art has took root in my um, seat because some of the audience you you may like me. You know, before I was forty one, if someone tell me artist, you know, say art, I would say, oh, that's not me. <laughs> I, I'm not artistic. I'm not a singer. I my voice is terrible. Um uh so but like just you know, this is one of those the, the flow of synchronicity of the universal synchronicity has brought me to um my uh, uh to my first piano teacher, my um my Haya, that's her name. And um when I first saw her, the first lesson, um she asked she she asked me to she she helped we did some qigong and then from that place she helped me to access a deep deep pain you know maybe pro probably when i was 4 or 5 years old when i knew i couldn't uh, study art growing up that that pain has already lodged there and she helped me to access there and i just cried for the whole hour and i literally, literally in her arms cried like a 4 years old a child for an hour couldn't stop and and afterwards i was so embarrassed i couldn't i didn't go back to her for a month <laughs> i was like this stranger i just cried in her arm for an, uh, what's what's up what's going on <laughs> and then um and then in the next several years she unlocked the door of artistic expression in me by bringing me so gently and it's only with her loving nurturing presence that she brought me to back to that five-year-old, six-year-old who heartbroken of uh, not able to express herself again and again. And through my wailing, through my frustrated pounding on the piano, through my, you know, the, uh, you know, expression of anger and grief, song one at a time flowed out. <laughs> Uh, that was like unbelievable. Uh, I was that's is the deepest of magic that I witnessed, and uh, and same thing happened with me with my um, uh, improv dance teacher and the improv theater group. That that's the reason I never went to therapist. <laughs> it's because I'm surrounded by this kind of uh, uh, deep art, deep healing, uh, uh, deep uh, healers um, who who help me to learn how to integrate to mend my my mind back into my body and the spirit um 
I just want to share with the audience that spring has the most exquisite voice. I will sing. I will sing at the end. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> bang at Climate Change and Consciousness, uh, the 2019 gathering where uh, that really seeded my relationship with her and her exquisite tender voice that fuses her ancestry with present moment need silenced 400 people gathered around in sacred listening and awakening to their experience, their awareness of being children of the earth. So that, in that moment, composting was happening. I'm sorry, I'm going to use this metaphor a lot now because I love it. I can see it uh, happening. I can feel it in my body. This and and my family, my particular lineage, there's just enormous amounts of trauma and suffering. And I can feel even in the visualization that you led us through and this understanding, I can feel that being composted mm -hmm. uh, by, and it's just very touching to me by my poetry um, and by this program, that this program is composting all of that family agony and suffering uh, as we build a new family, a new relationship, a new collaborative way of being in the world and being of service to one another. Thank you. Yeah. Um, at the at the, the um, co conference, I said this, and I I want to keep practicing um, articulating this because I think this is a um, something that we've been our human family has forgotten. Um, I once watched a documentary of a uh, um, uh, indigenous people in Australia, a, a tribe in Australia, or I think actually somewhere down under, I forgot New Zealand or Australia. That when someone in that in the culture is so that in that tribe, when they experience some kind of criminal, uh, some uh, transgression or or some conflict of with other tribe, uh, the the shaman or the, the, the priests, they would uh, deep, go deep into meditation and source a song from, from the interbeing. And that song will, will generate coherence. That it carries a vibrational signature in the field that will uh, source a, a kind of a coherence that helps as a seed to resolve whatever that conflict or incriminate. Um, transgression. So it's, this is deep consciousness technology <laughs> that um, deep medicine that we, we are actually very fortunate to live a time where it's required, needed, and so, uh, you know, these so readily wanting to come into human being <laughs> that, you know, in, in the, in the sun culture I'm part of, we call the songs, uh, we literally see songs as beings. They 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 are like this spirit floating around that um when we open our channel, you know, this way of artistic endeavor is very different from the kind of you know the, the arts the, the established art school uh um the uh, academic uh world. You you the way I learn I, you know I I don't read any music, I don't know I Stephanie called me a musician. I don't read the music sheet at all. I play by ear. I play by heart. Um, and uh, uh, um, so it, it's through the kind of Qigong exercise we do, the kind of dance we do. We open the channel. We open our meridians. And this vibration in the form of music will, will literally come to you, come to me um, to be transmitted. And, and then they, they serve as an act um, a service to cohere whatever the you know the the, the the whatever the situation that you are part of um, embedded in um, when it comes from that deep place of the heart. Um, yeah, so um, I think I'm going to um, 
maybe talk just a little bit about, uh, let's bring it down to the ground and talk a little bit about the elective track that I'm part of. And then I'll finish with a, as a song. How does that sound? Um, yeah, okay. So um, I'm gonna share my slides actually. So the in the regenerative health um, MS program, um, it, it, it looks like I'll be co-teaching part of the core course. And there will be three different courses that I offer, uh, which for people who are interested will be the elective track, which also is part of the certificate program that is forming right now at the Residence Pass Institute. Um, so you will get this double uh, benefit um, through this elective track. Oops. So um, I'm what I uh, listed out here. So people can see the um, slide. Looks like. So if I don't hear anything, I assume that that's fine. It's okay. Yes, we can see it, and you might want to make it full screen as well. Oh, it's not full screen yet. Ah, yes. I'm sorry. Now it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. So um, so. The you know the reductionist mental health ingredients, talk therapy, meds, diagnosis, which are definitely um, needed and has its place, but we want to add in this more central core, uh, heart based um, aspect of mental health, which include somatic attunement, uh, which includes this kind of inquiry process uh, based on a quality of presence and allowing arts and community and belonging. So with that, uh, I'm gonna just talk a little bit about this elective track. Um, there are three credits right now in the master program and one more that's still in the making that's potentially either being the PhD or can be its own program later on. So these three credits, one is called the Dancing Dao. So it's, uh, uh, so I've been doing Qigong since I was a teenager and I've learned quite a, a different uh, form. And as well, I'm also a, um, imp uh, a dancer. So I, I fused, synthesized these different forms of Qigong with, uh, with, um, with uh, dance movement because I want to give people a chance. I want to enable, empower people to find that um, agency and autonomy of their own body so that they can express their own Qi in a spontaneous and uh, um, flow uh, state. So that's that's what I call my um, in, my uh, rendering of um, qigong and the improv dance called the dancing dao. So this course not is not just a um, dance or movement and dance. It's also a, a deep study of our meridian channels. Um, so so actually when we do qigong practice, we're we're literally we're moving the energetic lines of our body in relationship to the entire universe. So we're, when we're doing, so in, in the Qigong state, we're actually experiencing ourselves in a fractal version uh, of the, the energy of the, um, the universal energy. So that's Dancing Tao. And then uh, the second module is called the Resonance Circle, which is, um, uh, we, we're gonna teach, basically this is, this one is, is to um, help us to find that child inside us that we can relate with each other in playground, um, but also bringing the actual life experience as the raw material for theater play, for music, so that we, we can revive that experience of being in a culture that's based on belonging instead of competition and extraction or materialism or consumerism. Um, this is um, so. This is something I've synthesized with my uh, immersion in um, artistic endeavor, and also um, a, a, a line of work called applied theater, which is really returning theater work back to its roots. When a villager, you know, uh, people in a village would, after days of work, um, hunting or walking the field they come back to the campfire and share what's like um, for the day to go out and explore and digest, deeply digest our uh, experience in the context of uh, um, a group. 
and that is, is has been sustained the mental health of many ancient cultures throughout the millennium uh, before the individualistic individualistic culture becomes so predominant. So that's what the resonance circle um, is. And, uh, and the last uh, module resonance facilitation is this um, inquiry. It's basically a mindfulness inquiry process. It's not talk therapy. It's not about analyzing our experience, uh, analyzing our uh, psyche. It's really about um, either self-facilitated or peer-supported um, deep in a mindfulness state to experience those deep emotions, positive or negative, in a way that to further to support our evolution, our growth, and 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 our integration. So, um, and lastly, uh, this is something that's still in the making, but I'm just going to touch upon a little bit to say that uh, the resonance code is sourced. Some of you probably know this um, very ancient divinatory, one of the oldest um, uh, divinatory system on. In, in a, on the planet, the I Ching Book of Change. Um, so it's through my, me and my co-workers, um, uh, my partner and several other uh, co-workers, we have um, synthesized or reversed it in the modern context to support the needs, crisis, and, and the opportunities of our time in the form of resonance code. And I see that really as a is a is a is a modern priest and priestesshood. You know, yesterday I, at the after chat, I talk about this karmic law. Um, this um, you know, uh, our there's a there's a um, deeper cosmic uh, law that governs things like synchronicity. Um, is actually at the, the the underlay the deep the deeper current that shepherds the, our human civilization and human evolution. And this uh, work, this uh, divinatory system and the resonance code is really beginning to for us to understand and how we interact with that deeper cosmic law so that we can um, uh, become a steward uh, of, of the sacred laws. So that's the overview of this elective track. And uh, uh, obviously, we'll, if you are interested, we can talk more in the um, after chat. Uh, and uh, and I will also be available for uh, Q and A at the May thirtieth, right, Stephanie? Yes, faculty meeting. Yes, and and uh, I do want to let people know that uh, Spring is the author of the Resonance Code, uh, which is one of the required readings in the MA, and I think the PhD program definitely will absorb this more advanced understanding that provides you with an opportunity to study with an indigenous Taoist who has evolved the transmission of I Ching, the transmission of Qigong, adapting it for modern times, for our crisis-ridden times, and who is imparting a way for your original brilliance to rise up, not in predetermined ways, but organically. And I so appreciate how Spring speaks to the tendency to try to immediately convert rage into something calmer or depression into something happier which I would say is an affliction of the spiritual bypass culture that has evolved, which is a form of colonization and is not the way forward, is not the way to the new story for humanity that this program imparts through regenerative health. Uh, so the opportunity to experience a spring's teaching is precious. That's the only word that comes to me uh, out of my direct experience with her and what she imparts, what she transmits through her way of being, as well as through the specific teachings. And please join us uh, in the after chat. The after chat has been really rich with questions about the program. I'm so appreciative of 
how uh, Shannon and Stan have turned over that platform to inquiries into this program because we really want people to have the opportunity to talk with us directly and to experience the faculty because we are the ones, it's who we are as well as what we have to offer. And we're very distinct uh, people. Uh, and you will have the opportunity in the program, no matter how you embrace it, for your personal reflections, for your personal unfolding, you can see that the personal unfolding is essential. There is no revolution in healthcare unless the healthcare providers are themselves evolving beings. That's a revolutionary statement in itself. Yeah. We are those people. You can see the way that we relate to one another, how we fuel and balance and how we bring our own resolutions, our own enthusiasm for what we've developed into a collaborative fluid interweaving. So the information about the after chat is posted, is part of your uh, reminders that you receive. Please join us in the after chat so that we can continue this conversation and you can ask your specific questions about yourself and your path. Uh, and thank you, Jim, for, for joining um, us. I point. went, I forgot. Is there still time that I can share a song? Uh, I think you can. I think you certainly can. We're okay. all holding our breath. Okay. So I would love to share this song to uh, thank you for your presence and the attendance for this space. This is a song that came to me when I was actually dealing with the aftermath of COVID. Um, I had some severe long, uh, just a, a kind of aftermath that I wasn't able to sing for a month. Um, and then one day I deeply connected with the ocean, the Salish Sea, um, close to my house and just asking the ocean and the mountain to hold me, to heal me. And then from that deep um, union, this song came and, and that began my healing. Um, I'm going to open my original sound music for music. music. Um, so, Jim, if you can mute yours, that, that will probably be better for not having echoes. Ocean, uh, ocean, please wash my very feet. Mountain, oh, mountain. Please accept my devotion. River, oh river, please sing with the joy of my heart. Starlight, oh starlight, please guide my destiny. The wounds I cannot heal, I offer to the sky above me. The pains of my past becomes the ground on which I stand. The desire of my soul rings as blessings to the world and tenderness in my heart is for the ones i love the tenderness in my heart is for the ones I love. Thank you, Spring. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie.
Uh, that will bring us to a close uh, for today, everyone. Uh, we'll if you could turn off your original sound screen, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. That'll do it for us for today. Uh, we'll reconvene tomorrow uh, for our fourth session, which uh, I think uh, Stella will be doing a deep dive uh, with us tomorrow, and then we'll summarize on Friday. You're all welcome to the after chat uh, session. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, what Stephanie and Spring and Stella are uh, developing in terms of regenerate health, uh, empowerment, uh, which will also be available for a master's and PhD degree uh, at Ubiquity. This has been Sensational Spring. Thank you so much for your depth. And thank you so much for your heartfulness. Uh, it's been inspiring to us all. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow for our fourth out of five sessions. Bye for thank now. Thank you, Jim.